the Dassault Rafale, somehow simultaneously the ugliest and most beautiful fighter jet ever made. I mean, look at his little chubby cheese, isn't he adorable? Join me as I build Hobby Boss's rather nice rendition of the slightly more popular Eurocanard. As with very few aircraft, this build started with gawking out the sprues. Like Hobby Boss's A7, this kit looks absolutely beautiful. There's nice pronounced panel lines and rivets, all the detail on the smaller parts is nice and crisp, and whoa, hey, look at that, the cockpit actually has things in it. Crazy, wild even. Apart from the very obvious, incredibly awkwardly placed ejector pin marks in the main cockpit tub, which I tried and failed to fill in, it's good enough that I didn't feel compelled to buy any photo wedge, so this kit's already a solid 10 out of 10 for me. The Rafale's cockpit is pretty much just black, but I thought that would look wicked boring, so I used a very dark grey as a base, picked out a few control panels in black, as well as any other bitumens and robots in their respective colours, and finished everything off with a great big dry brush. It should be noted that the kit does come with decals for the cockpit, but even at a glance they look like they'd barely line up with the raised detail, and generally look a bit crap so I didn't bother with them. When all was said and done, I was left with a cockpit that looked quite nice actually. Shame it's going to be hidden by a millimetre of clear plastic really. Moving on to general construction, and it was actually quite good. Above average, dare I say. The nose landing gear base section lines up with its void on the bottom half of the fuselage pretty well, although you do have to babysit it for like 20 minutes just to make sure it stays lined up. The spine on the top half of the fuselage fit alright, but did leave a very slight step, and the vertical stabilizer goes on alright, but really, it would be a bit embarrassing if it didn't. The canards do have a rod running between them, so you could theoretically have them freely rotate if you didn't glue them in, but honestly, it's a bit flimsy and the range of movement is pretty small, so I didn't bother. The top and bottom fuselage halves go together relatively nicely, but the nose section of the Rafale is generally just a bit of a pig regardless of what kit you're building. The seam runs along the plane's, uh, what, what would you call them? Cheeks, I guess? There's a lot of panel line detail running across the seam, and really, no matter how perfectly you align the two halves, you'd still definitely want to clean it up. Lucky for you, I did it off camera. The air intakes have a bunch of ejector pin marks, but I found that scraping them off with a craft knife was good enough. They need a fair bit of finagling to get the shape to line up with the rest of the fuselage, but at least the joint seems to form a panel line, so it's one less thing to worry about. After a bunch of filling and sanding and masking the canopy, I did a bit of priming. It revealed me some imperfections, so I had to do even more filling and sanding. Yay! While I was waiting for the primer to fully cure, I made the exhaust and the things under wings. I don't normally cover the exhaust in detail, and this is no exception. Shit's boring. The kit gives you a reasonable spread of things to put under the wings, mainly some drop tanks, Apache cruise missiles, and Mica EM and IR air to air missiles. While they do give you decals for everything, they're only for inert training rounds like you'd see at an air show, which is boring and cringe, so I just painted everything by hand. The kit also comes with some Magic 2 missiles, although those would only be accurate for a Rafale M during a very brief window of time from what I can tell. Still, into the spare box they go. Before painting, I put the landing gears on. The kit's designed around putting the main landing gears on before you stick the main fuselage together, but you can just as easily get around this by snipping off the two little logs on either side of the main landing gear struts. Otherwise though, they're alright, nothing of note to really mention about them, other than some truly fucked sprue gate locations. Now, painting. I don't think anyone but the French actually know what colour these things are. You could look at a hundred different forum threads and get a hundred different guesses, some better than others. Personally, I went with a 3 to 1 mix of FS36270 and FS36320. I think this is what SciHeart recommends on their decal sheets, and comparing it to walkarounds and whatnot, it looks close enough to me. Otherwise though, it's literally just a single colour, it would take effort and skill to mess it up. After a coat of gloss, I did the decals. This kit comes with two schemes in the box. First, and the one I went with, is 7-HH of Escadron de Chas 17 Province. This plane is notable for being one of the first Rafales to be modified to drop laser guided bombs for use in Afghanistan in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. Given that the Rafales Damocles pod entered service in 2009, about two years after these initial modifications, they had to rely on Mirage 2000Ds to laser for them. Knowing this, I really wish they included GBU-12s or at least the pylons or something in this kit, but it is what it is. The second is 310-EG from the CAM, the French Air Force's test squadron. 
From what I can tell, this plane eventually got transferred to the same squadron as 7-HH and would later be sold off to the Hellenic Air Force, but other than that I don't really know what else it got up to. The decal sheet is functionally fine. They released from the back machine incredibly quickly, which is a nice change of pace compared to Hogboss's A7 for example, but the printing really isn't that good. The roundels are noticeably out of register, and a lot of the decals like the ejection seat warning triangle or the rescue arrow on the canopy just generally look dollopy. It very well might be worth investing in some aftermarket for this one. After a coat of satin, I could then proceed to make it look interesting. I already have a video going over how I do all my shading stuff, but the short of it is pretty much just a powder line wash and then sort of just moving raw unthinned oil paints around until it looks good. I didn't really stray too far from the steps outlined in said video, only for going the quote unquote colour modulation step because it's grey in it. I did however go back and do a bit of extra streaking as per some photos I've seen. It was as simple as putting some oil paints where you want them to go and then streaking them back with a flat brush dampened in white spirits. Easy as. But really, after that, all that's left was to glue on everything that needed to be glued on, and then I could finally call my build of Hobby Boss's Rafael done. I've mentioned like a bajillion times how inconsistent, how hit or miss per chance, Hobby Boss's kits are. This one's definitely a hit though. For about $35 after shipping, you get something that puts a lot of similarly priced, if not even more expensive kits to shame. The fit's alright, the detail's really nice, and apart from like maybe a few poorly placed sprue gates, it doesn't do anything to actively make me hate it. I have heard that Hobby Boss messed up with their measurements, making the kit closer to about 176th scale, but really, it's up to you to decide if you're willing to buy an Italeri kit about it. This kit really is divinity given plastic form. 